So welcome everybody. We are right at 5.30, so let's start. We'll call the meeting to order. Okay. <clears throat> call the meeting to order, and let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Thanks to everybody for coming. Can you hear us, Gary? Yes, I can. Okay. We'll have to ask everyone this afternoon or this evening to speak up so that it's a little hard having participated by phone before it's also it's pretty hard to hear by phone at times so before we get into the uh, agenda I would like to take just a minute and recognize that we lost a commissioner here this past Sunday Commissioner Daryl Unruh and if you would uh, give me the point of pleasure here I'd like to for us to take a moment of silence as we recognize Daryl for his service and uh, his commitment to the community and this commission. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Appointments, Planning and Zoning Board of Appeals. We have one outside resignation. Um, I knew from the packet I saw we had a couple of applications. Applications will be how long, Kelly? Uh, uh, they were due by October 21st. They are due by October 21st. So these are the, the ones that were submitted. Gary, had you had a chance to review those applications there? Yes, I have, Fred. We have two outstanding candidates, but I'd like to appoint Andy McLennan to that position. Okay. The Andy McLennan. So would that be a motion then? Yes. Yes. Okay. I would second that motion. All right. All those in favor of appointing Andy McLennan to the outside the city position on the Planning and Zoning Appeals Board signify by saying aye. 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 And we did have some good applications there. We thank people for applying. And then uh, the Library Board of Trustees. Uh, one we, application we have one app, and that was Lynn, Lynn Reddy. Gary, are you? Fred, I, I have had three other people talk to me and say they would like to be considered for that position, but they didn't get the applications in, so I'm going to defer that one for the moment. Defer, in other words? Put that on the agenda for next time around. You want me to extend? You extend the application process then for what? Yeah, Another a couple more weeks. Two more weeks? Two weeks, okay. That'd be great. Okay. All right. Next we have the consent agenda. Any comments on the consent agenda by other commission members? Leonard? No, I don't have any questions. Okay, Gary, you have any questions? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. So we would uh, entertain a motion then to adopt the consent agenda as presented, which would be items A through um, H. I'd make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion by commission members? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right. Public hearings. We have a public hearing on the consider the condemnation of 524 North Penn, apartment 114 is dangerous and unsafe. Don? Last time we had uh, uh, asked to, I think, defer for 60 days while they worked on repairs. Pairs are going really, really well. Uh, very satisfied with the way things are going. Uh, I would like to ask maybe we do the same thing this time wait 60 days further extended yes. or further can you hear yes. it all gary 
Yes, I can. Okay. So you'd write your recommendation? Yeah, the funds are in place. Work's going forward. Um, work's going well. Uh, I would refer back to my days as an insurance adjuster. I'd be very pleased if work would always go forward like this. So. Okay. All right. I know the owner's here. Dwayne, have you got any? Would you have any comments? Um, just, I'm still befuddled as to how you can condemn 25% of the building. I don't really understood that. Well, that was kind of my question. It was brought up earlier that I think the standard we found out was 75%. So in a building yeah. like, like this, um, it, it's different than a house, but still, like the 25% damage doesn't affect the whole building. And is this something we need to, to go back and, and look at our, our standards of condemnation or to expand them to? I think, I think we can look at that and see if we need to make some adjustments or some changes there. Because it was brought up that even on residents, that if it's only damaged less than 75% that really we don't need to condemn the house. Uh, I was thinking on this one though that each apartment had its own separate legal address the sec that it's been separated, right? This, this so if you condemn the building, how could you... Yeah, I understand that. that? Well, sure? well, it means to get the interior fixed back up so that it meets the residential standards. So if you go through with it and you guys end up bulldozing it, how are you going to bulldoze one fourth? Well, they always try to make sure that that doesn't happen. They work with the owners, and, and this one's, you know, going as, as along. But in this case, I think the legal is the, our by apartment. So, um, but, yeah, we can definitely look at that. Jeff, did you have a comment? Well, I think we're talking about a, a, a townhouse association or like a condominium, and ownerships can be separate apartment to apartment, and they're separate legal descriptions, separate deeds. So... So now, some owner may own a whole block of them, but there, there are separate deeds. On this property, it had separate deeds? I believe so. I think the Keeley family started this, and they set it up as a townhouse association. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it's still that way or not. Dwayne would know. There were multiple owners within this one building. And, uh, Jeff, isn't there, uh, wasn't, can't the, the city doesn't have to remove it if the owner doesn't act. Can't they spend the money by statute and actually repair it? So demo, dem, demolishing it's not the only option, correct? Correct. Yeah, like you said, it'd be silly to try and tear down one mm -hmm. apartment. And exactly. Yeah, six apartment units. That's a fair so, question. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fair yeah. question. Yeah. No, it goes by legal. So the only thing that was published was that one apartment that had the fire. But if you didn't have that process, say that they were all owned by different people, and then you had something happen in one, if, if there was no method to get that one apartment fixed, it would affect everyone else's apartment. So wouldn't you want some mechanism for the city to be able to, you know, make sure that that gets resolved? I mean, so, I mean, you look at it different ways. It's just like yeah. sense to be used knowing yeah. what owner wouldn't, wouldn't do the repairs. Oh, well. We could tell you well, stories well, later if you'd be, like to hear that. There may be a couple. I can tell you there's no, I can tell you I can assure you that happens. That don't do repair. If I have an investment of 120000 in that building, do you think I'm going to throw the rest of that investment? No, of course not. We appreciate that. But we can tell you we deal with multiple owners and, and yeah. But we have to treat everybody the same. We can't treat people differently. I mean, you have to treat them the same. Yeah. Common sense, but sometimes well, and helps. and I believe the you know the commission's trying to work with yeah. you by extending it to to work with you and allow you to finish. So it's not actually been condemned. So, I mean, they are trying to work with you. So, but we have to be consistent. We can't say we're going to make this guy follow the rules and this guy we're not. Yeah, I guess I was so, just the speed at which you know I think condemnation started three days after the fire. Well, they they do that. A fire initiates the condemnation process. That's always been been the case. Okay, so we close yeah. the hearing. The recommendation is to extend the 60 days. Yes. Does that take a... What we'll need action? is a motion to adjourn the hearing because this is a that public motion, hearing. Yeah, I make a motion we adjourn the hearing. I'll make a motion we close the hearing. Second. 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 
adjourn the hearing or close the hearing? There's, there's, a, big difference. there's a big you difference between those two. Hearing, you got to start from scratch. If you adjourn it, you pick up where you left off. I make a motion we adjourn, adjourn. the hearing and okay. reconvene in 60 days. Second. Okay. You got it, Jan? Yep. All right. All those then in favor of the motion to adjourn the hearing for 60 days signify by saying aye. 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 Gary? Yes, aye. Aye. Okay. Item J, public hearing for neighborhood, neighborhood revitalization. Uh, plan for North Penn. This is the uh, plan that was given, I think, to the commission, what, a month or so ago, and uh, haven't had any feedback from any changes. Uh, <coughs> it's for your consideration. Uh, the work is proceeding to get it done. Uh, but we need to decide whether we want to do it or not, or make any changes to it. Okay. Do you have any questions? Do we have any citizens that want? Yeah, is there any? We have Lisa, who had filled out a form. Lisa Richard. Yes. Thanks for reminding me. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name's Lisa Richard. And I wanted to comment on item J, the neighborhood revitalization plan. Um, after looking it over, um, it referenced an appendix, an exhibit A. I, was, I got a copy of that um, today. And upon reviewing that, it looks like there are some items that are missing uh, that would be required under state law. Uh, so if you look at Kansas, State Law 1217-117. I don't know if you have a copy of that in your packets. Um, it lists the requirements for what has to be in the plan. And I know um, that Ms. Rutledge uh, had noticed one of these and was going to look into it um, and see if that document was available and, and how that could be obtained. But if we look at the Exhibit A, which I believe you all have, look at Part 1, Legal Description of Neighborhood Revitalization Area, see Attachment A. Um, I don't believe there is an Attachment A with the legal description, so you'll need that in your plan. Uh, if you look at, let's see, Part 3, Listing of Owners in the, in, of Record in the Area, um, you also don't have that. There's no Attachment A. And Ms. Rutledge noticed that and was going to be looking into that. I did see online that the city of Emporia uh, addressed that by just simply noting in the ordinance or the, the exhibit that um, that information uh, was posted online. So they posted a list of the property owners online. Another municipality just simply said, you can get this information from the county appraiser's office. Which, which one would be legally adequate, I, I have no idea. Um, your attorney can help you with that, I'm sure. And um, the other uh, item that I noticed was um, there's a requirement in KSA 1217-117 to show the existing zoning classifications and district boundaries and the existing and proposed land uses within the area. So your plan lists the zoning districts within, but it doesn't actually delineate them relative to the area. So in some of these other plans I saw online, they actually have a map that shows not only your revitalization area, but also the zoning districts that it's going to be overlaid on. And I believe my opinion is that that's a requirement, but again, um, that uh, would be a matter for your attorney. Okay, so those were my comments. How much more time do I have? 90 seconds. Uh, two questions. Why does it exclude Penn Avenue from railroad down to Locust or Chestnut? And secondly, uh, will this change the process for condemnation of dilapidated properties within the revitalization area in any way? Thank you. Okay. 
That's it. Time's up. Uh, as far as what was selected, uh, actually, Aaron Heckman's the one that uh, uh, worked on this, and uh, I have no, I have no idea why he selected the ones he did, and um, we can defer this, uh, adjourn this to a, another public hearing, uh, and we'll find those answers, or we can forget it if the commission so desires. It's just up to the commission. This was done based on the commission. Uh, uh, suggesting we do one in that area and uh, we were unable to get those uh, legals from the county so we had Mac help us to get those but uh, we can certainly change it or uh, get whatever the Commission requires whatever you want uh, the attachment A that um, Lisa referred to, I got that email to me this afternoon from Mac. So I did not print out copies. I didn't know that you guys would want to print a copy of all the addresses, but I have it available electronically. Okay. Now with the commercial property along Penn Avenue yes. and in that area, I'd like to consider it to maybe encourage development and also uh, revitalization of some of the businesses there to give them an opportunity that we've given on on West Main. Um, so, you know, I would, I'd like to see us continue to pursue it, but um, see that we do have some questions that we need to answer. So, you know, I'd like to see the be brought back for further consideration at a later date or adjourn this hearing are you wanting to extend the area because if you are we're going to have to do additional work and and have time to to do that so we we just need to clarify if that's what you're yeah. wanting um and i didn't that's the direction of the i commission. didn't get my note of the area that she mentioned from what i saw before it looked like uh, an area that was workable um, i'm not for sure the area that was mentioned that would need to be expanded too, but it looks like from some of the questions that uh, Lisa brought up uh, concerning the legal descriptions, the statute reference, that maybe we need to have some more information given to us prior to bringing it back for another hearing. So you don't want to extend the hearing, you want to just not move forward at this time until you get more information because we there's no reason to bring it back if you want to expand it in its present form how long will it take you to get the information well mac <clears throat> did that for us Mac's not in the same position and now. so now aaron doesn't work there so i can't <clears throat> tell you without doing some research that's then but with without can, knowing what areas you know if it's just going to be a few properties that probably yeah. wouldn't be that difficult if you're looking at adding you know because you have all these different parcels if we knew the area then I could give you a better answer I would suggest we put what? it back on the agenda at the next meeting in the meantime the Commission look at it and uh, decide what areas you want to add or take away and then we can go from there okay but this is a public hearing so but you either want to adjourn it or would just stop and we'll reset a new we'll one. have to reset it if we're going to change it we'll need to reset it yeah what was the area Lisa can you repeat the area that you had mentioned uh, and this was just a, a question not not a, an opinion as to that it should be included or not included but if you look behind you you can see uh, on the map here that up at rail the railroad tracks and railroad Avenue Right along Penn, th that block is not uh, included in in the revitalization area. It's not green. Um, Which one? So just to the west of Penn Avenue, going down to Locust, it would match the current revitalization area boundary there. Um, and I, I think you have some options in that area. I was just asking for the justification. Mm -hmm for the difference well after looking at it i believe that's in another uh, zone already downtown. already covered but i'm not for 100 percent sure I'll have well to there you go so yeah uh, but that that's the area that i was talking about the block between sycamore and the railroad so is that the only block you're talking about 
just I was talking about those looks like three blocks mm -hmm. uh, or sure four between Sic Sycamore and, and Locust is. up to Marshall Railroad. I'm not sure but I think it is. Not sure how well you're able to follow this, Gary. I got it. Any thoughts? I think we should confirm that those areas are covered by another plan or include them in this one. Okay. So then we would need to <clears throat> well, we, adjourn the hearing. We could adjourn the hearing until the next day. Then we get some new information, then decide if we need to reschedule a new hearing or adjourn it for another time. Sounds like a Okay. okay. So would that be a motion? I'll make a motion that we ad adjourn the public hearing uh, to allow research for additional information regarding uh, adjacent revitalization areas and also uh, research the questions that were presented tonight. Um, adjourn the, the hearing for 30 days. Why don't you adjourn it to the next meeting and then you can always adjourn it again. <clears throat> that way you're moving it along. Remember, Kent? Yeah. Kent, the next meeting. Okay. Is it Told no. Is that one that's questionable? Is that one that we're talking about changing later? Just because he's moving. Why don't we just adjourn it for 30 days and we'll have plenty of time? Okay. Yeah, we'll probably need that much time. Yeah. Okay. Did you hear the okay. motion, Gary? I did. I'll second. Okay, been moved and seconded that we adjourn the hearing for 30 days on the revitalization of the uh, North Penn area. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, aye. Three zero. <clears throat> okay, next item is the public hearing to consider a resolution of the intent to issue industrial bonds with the provision of a tax abatement for the property located at 2700 West Main Street. Uh, this is the uh, uh, situation where we had back in 2010, Curtis Levine had an uh, economic development EDX uh, uh, incentive uh, plan. And uh, unknown to him, there's a constitutional provision that provides if you do any leasing with the property in that uh, uh, benefit area, you lose the benefit. So he lost the benefit. So this is being done not only to assist uh, Hugo's in their development, but also to uh, try to make uh, Curtis whole on his, on what he would have gotten other than the constitutional provision. And uh, Kim Bell from our, uh, our bond attorneys are, is here to uh, give you the technical details. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, and uh, Mickey's correct. There, the constitutional abatement for manufacturing and warehousing facilities is quite limited. And if it is not exclusively used by the company that has granted the abatement, then it goes away. So when he, when Le Mr. Levine entered into a lease or a lease purchase option with another company, that destroyed that exclusive use requirement and that voided the abatement. Um, what we are planning now is to issue industrial revenue bonds to finance the acquisition of the property. Um, the tax abatement that is granted in connection with industrial revenue bonds is far more flexible. Any property that is financed with the proceeds of the bonds is eligible for the abatement. Um, the statute requires that you hold a public hearing, which you're doing now, um, perform a cost-benefit study, and then you can approve a resolution of intent, and this would indicate your intent to issue the bonds, um, subject to the condition that we get all the documents executed in a way that, and draft it and execute it, that are satisfactory to you and to your counsel, as well as to um, the company and their counsel. And once we get to that point, then we will come back to you for approval of a bond ordinance which would actually authorize the issuance of the bonds. We anticipate that we would do that in December. Um, the way the statute is written, the 
abatement begins the calendar year after the year in which we issue the bonds. For the, so for the abatement to begin as of January 1, 2017, we need to get the bonds issued by December 31 of this year. Um, the resolution actually provides for seven years of adverse on property tax abatement. I noticed your agenda item said 10, but it's actually seven years. And the abatement is also subject to a condition that um, the company provides 10 employees at the site. And these can be employees of Calcourt LLC, they could be employees of Hugo's Industrial Supply Inc. or any other related entity, but that they maintain 10 employees at the facility. And if they fail to maintain that number of employees for two calendar quarters in any calendar year, then they have to pay a portion of the abatement back. And it's a sliding scale depending on how many employees they actually have. If they have 10, they don't have to pay anything. If they have nine, it's 20%. If they have eight, it's 40%. Seven is 60%. Six is 80%. If they have five or less, then they have to basically pay back all the taxes that they've been abated. They have more employees than that, but that language came from the agreement uh, that Curtis did. It just replicates that uh, agreement and makes sure that, that they keep those, at least that minimum number employed. Okay. Now, issuing the industrial revenue bonds means that there's no city obligation for repayment Absolutely Taxpayers not. Taxpayers are not city, exposed in any way for... <laughs> absolutely not. The city acts as a conduit issuer only. Um, the bonds will be held either by the company or by their lender, and the city will have no obligation whatsoever to make any payment on that debt. Calcor is Hugo's? Um, I can let yes. his attorney okay. oh, <laughs> she explain here. that a little bit closer. Yeah. Okay. So the sole the actual purpose of the bond is for the purchase of the facility by Calcor. Right, and then to grant the abatement. And the abatement goes to Calcor. Right. And, and they'd, they'd made improvements along the time, about the time they leased it. Uh, so the improvements have been made. Yeah, so that's what the $800,000 is to cover your improvements in the purchase of the, the property. I noticed in, the, in your schedule, it says in the first year, uh, you'll have two employees, 12 construction jobs created, but you've already exceeded the, the two employees. Correct. Correct? Correct. Okay. And this all goes back to Curtis and I's original agreement that Mickey explained. And that's where it gets it gets convoluted Confusing in there. Because, you know, what I, I see, I see the bond that we're Correct. approving is between you and our action. Correct. And yours and Curtis's is another situation that really we're, <coughs> we're kind of out of. And it doesn't affect us. Yeah. I mean, that. that's all I want to make sure from looking at the information here. <clears throat> if we're going to have abatement that you really exceeded your two employees at the start, not gearing up that for 10 to go from two to 10 in, in a year, that's pretty aggressive. But, um, <clears throat> Corey, no, do, you, think, do you have any comments you'd like to make, <clears throat> Corey? Uh, not your, we're trying to improve West Main, create jobs. Can, can you, so that people at home want to hear what's going on, Corey? Um, thank you. Uh, you bet. Thank you. Um, we're just trying to improve West Main. We're trying to grow our company, keep it in independence. We really like independence. We try to support as much as we can. And I'd love to have 1,500 employees in there. And <laughs> we work in strive every day to keep that going so that's all I'd like to comment on kind of your your figures that you listed increase local sales revenue and the personal income that's really then not based on an assumption but you've had some pretty good fact to we've been blessed um, 
we're growing nationally overseas and uh, hope to bring the profits and the employees back here as well. Good. So in some ways, Corey, this is just a step towards continued <clears throat> growth it is. with the acquisition of this property. It allows you to continue to go ahead and expand your business and employment base. Is that correct? That is correct. And right now we have the same footprint leased in Irving, Texas. Um, I'd rather bring it back here if we can as well to keep growing. Because it says over 10 years, employed a plan to create 11 permanent jobs from two, which is a net gain of nine. And that projection is based upon what you know now. Could It could increase. I sure hope we've hit rock bottom around here. <laughs> okay. That's, yes, I would agree with that. Okay. Gary, have you got any questions? Would you like to ask anything? No, I'm okay. Thanks, Fred. Okay. Leonard, further questions? No, just if no. there's any public. Any other public comments from anybody by any chance? Well, this is exciting. This gives us an opportunity to grow another business. And uh, now that, Kim, that motion is... <clears throat> I did have a, a question for the for you about the bonds. Looking back at some of the others that we've issued, this is just the first step. Then we'll advertise for uh, a public hearing for the bonds? No. Um, or, unlike your general <clears throat> obligation debt where you um, have a public sale and, and uh, underwriting firms mm -hmm. bid on the bonds, these will be a, this will be a private transaction. Um, these are taxable for federal um, income tax purposes and under the securities laws we have to sell them in a private transaction we anticipate that either the company or their lender will hold the bonds okay. um, but we will come back to you once we get all of the documents drafted and agreed upon and we're ready to actually issue the bonds we'll come back to you for approval of a bond ordinance that will authorize the actual issuance of the bonds and then we'll have the details of all of that for you. This is just sort of the first step that uh, allows the company to, to move forward in, in reliance on your action and lets us get started on, on getting all the documents pulled together. And what is, what's this bond? It's not an IRB? Is it is it? an IRB, yes. Okay. Yes. But it's different than other IRBs. There are there are a variety of okay. IRBs. I know you uh, were recently doing doing some others. Um, some are sold in the public market. Those are usually for facilities that um, the tax code enables us to issue bonds that are federally tax exempt. The interest is tax exempt to bondholders. Okay. Um, but this type of a bond, it, it's still an industrial revenue bond for state law purposes, but it has a different treatment under the tax and securities laws. Okay, I'm just trying to get familiar yeah. with. Mm -hmm. Each case of why each, it's each different. Case. These, these are much sure more understood. similar to, in fact, we'll be back to see you in December on um, the Cessna mm -hmm. aircraft bonds mm -hmm. that we do every year. These are, these are be very similar to, to that kind of a process. Okay. okay. So that technically is. tonight we're going to approve a resolution to proceed with the issuing of the mm -hmm. um, taxable industrial revenue bonds for Cap 2700 <laughs> Right. So you need to close the public hearing, and then um, uh, we need a motion to approve the resolution. Okay. All right. So, understand. Okay. I'll make a motion we close public hearing. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. And now we need a resolution, a motion to approve the resolution to issue the revenue bonds for 2700 West Main. I make a motion that we issue a resolution for the intent to issue industrial revenue bonds uh, with the provision for tax abatement of property at 2,700 West Main. Okay. Gary, did you hear it? I did. I'll second. Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Gene, have you got that? Okay. <clears throat> All those in favor then signify by saying aye. 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 There's no opposed since it was unanimous. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks for what you're doing. Okay. 
All right, so now we're ready for item L, which is commission action. We're into commission action items, so we'll consider sitting the date of December 20th. I'm, I'm going to interrupt you on this one. Um, December 22nd is a meeting that later this meeting we're discussing about possibly rescheduling. So I'd like to schedule these on December 8th, which is not a meeting that might be rescheduled. So we want to change that date to December 8th. Yes. Did you catch that, Gary? Yes, thank you. All right. So we want to consider setting the date of December 8th. 2016 for public hearings to consider the following structures as dangerous and unsafe. First structure is 1005 West Pine. Yes, this is a vacant property. Uh, it's been vacant for uh, quite a while, according to the neighbors. I would like to uh, consider this, uh, start the process to consider this. Uh, Duncan, can you speak up a little bit? I'd like to start the process to consider this uh, dangerous and unsafe. Okay. Any contact with the owner? No. There's been no contact from the owner. Okay. Gary, in your packet, there's some pictures there. Those are the pictures that we're looking at. Have you got any comments? Nope. Then, uh, is there only source the address that you get from the county yes i've i've seen steve in town that's why i wonder do we have an address or a contact for him i i don't know i sometimes i don't always know the yeah the people that uh that we deal with i just have to go by the information that uh, that i get when we look it up if i can find it all Okay, that'd be I'll great. Let you know. That'd be great. We can proceed with this though, because yeah. that's obviously a building that needs some attention. So I'd make a motion then that we uh, set the date of December 8th for a public <clears throat> hearing to consider the uh, 1005 West Pine as dangerous and unsafe. Second. Okay, been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor then signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. 1300 West Locust. Yeah. 1300 and 1304? Both, yes. 1300 and 1304. As my mother is deceased from last October 4th, last year. And I don't think she did a tea, uh, time of death. She didn't will it to me. I don't know how I'm supposed to get it if I even own it or who is responsible for it. I don't know how I go about doing it or who I talk to. I live in Missouri. Uh, I traveled all the way here tonight to talk to you about it. I wasn't even sure if I was supposed to be here. I do know that when she moved in probably between 12 and 15 years ago, the house behind her has been condemned since she's lived there. And she went and ripped the doors off of it so that the city would tear it down and build her for it, and they never did. And then since she deceased, I haven't been able to mow the yard, and that's probably why you guys got pictures up there now, which is uh, blue lawnmower blew her lawnmower up that she left there, and now everything that was there got stolen. I mean, everything, anything of any value, the lawnmower, the uh, trailer, air conditioning unit. I mean, it, she was living in it at that time last year. I mean, she didn't die because it was not livable. She just, I just let the grass get away, I guess. And she owns the one behind it, and she owns the trailer. I think she owns two more down the road from that on the dead end street on Locust. And I got a bill the other day, I think it was, uh, Somebody mowed two yards, the city, I think it was, and sent me a bill for $200. Uh, I never see that yard mowed since she passed away besides the time I did, and then time I paid a guy across the street to mow it. Other than that, I've always kept them up. That block's always been nice. Uh, I'd like to sell it if I could, but like I said, I, I, all I do is work and travel and I'm in and out, and I don't know who to do it or who to talk to about it. I'm 36 years old, never owned anything. But my main concern is I'd like to ask somebody who I talk to to find out how I can get it in my name or if it can be getting my name. I don't know. So. I'd be happy after the, you're through with this property to take him out in the hall and tell him what he needs to do to get it into his name. Okay. So. 
And what was your name? Jimmy Mitchell. So this is 1313, 1304 West Locust, Jimmy yes. Mitchell. Yes. So this would be for both properties at 1300 West Locust and 1304 West Locust? I believe she and has, I believe she has paperwork. I'm not sure where it's at. I'd have to ask my sister of ownership of the lots behind it too. There's one down by the train tracks and there's one right beside it. It goes all the way back to the tree line. I need to find out how. Mm -hmm. If she don't have it, I can find out she owns that too. Uh, I don't know how we, if we want to pr proceed with each of these ones separately. I think if we can explain the process, this would allow us to meet with you, uh, determine what you would want to do or whoever owns the property, what they would want to do. So, Well, the process tonight, we're setting a, a hearing date to consider condemnation. So between now and, and December, December 8, 8th, yeah. it would give you an opportunity to work out the details. Then we can't take action on anything tonight, but December 8th, if you could come back, that's when we'll have a public hearing <coughs> to condemn the property officially. And you can let us know what, what your intent is. What your intent is, whether you're gonna, you know, you have the option instead of us tearing the houses down to tear the house down or you give you time if you can see that they can be salvaged to come with a plan of how you're going to do that or if you can repair them between now but December 8th you could let us know what your intent is and a projected time and everything okay. and then <clears throat> I, know, if, uh, I know the house next door needs to turn out for now a long time ago I don't have the funds right now to do it for low manpower. I we could we, we could visit we with could you after this meeting that. and we could we go we to. could go over this in detail with you. Okay. If you'd be if you could stick around for a few minutes. Okay, great. So the purpose tonight then is to establish a hearing date, which is what we need to do. We let's do separate motions on this. Yeah. Okay. So we would need a, a motion then to I would make a motion to set the public hearing date of December 8th to consider the, uh, 1300 West Locust as dangerous and unsafe. I'll second the motion. It's been moved and seconded. Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. All right, 1304 West Locust. Anybody want to make that motion or unhappy to? I'll make a motion that we. Uh, set the date for the public hearing to consider the structure as dangerous and unsafe for December 8th, 2016. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we set the <coughs> hearing date of December 8th for 1304 West Locust. Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, you understand? Okay, good. And Mr. Chubb will be happy to visit with you after the meeting and get you some okay all right 519 north 16th yes this one is uh, a vacant property from what i understand from the neighbors um this has been vacant for a number of years the owners passed away as from what, what i've been told but uh, uh it's property that uh, very concerned about the condition So you say it has been vacant for a long time? That's what I have been told by the neighbors, yes. That uh, I had asked about some things in the window. Uh, there was some stuffed animals, and a uh, gentleman told me that that's been there for years, and it's been vacant for years. Okay. I noticed the worst part of the house are the porches. The uh, actual house, the roof looked good, and for being vacant, not the windows were still intact. Yes, yeah, some uh, of them are. Some of them are, yeah. <clears throat> the, the owner that listed in the, the letter, is that the one that's deceased? I believe so. I believe so. Well, that house certainly needs some attention. Sub 8th. Because we're doing sitting a hearing for condemnation. If we find out information, yeah. 
right. before then we can make those decisions December. It's right. certainly my preference that we work to yeah. make these homes so livable let's again. Let's let the process work. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'd make a motion then that we set the date of December 8, 2016 for a public hearing to consider the uh, 519 North 16th is uh, dangerous and unsafe. Second. Been moved and seconded. Further discussion? All those in favor then signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Last one on here is 832 South 18th. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a brick building that it looks like it's been abandoned for a long time. We have never had any response to any of our uh, letters on this, and I would like to, to move forward. I'm concerned about the condition of that building. Letter was sent to Washington, D.C.? Yes. Okay. I think we're in the same position with this one as we've been with the others. Hmm. And it's... That, that place has got some potential, but... Yeah. yeah, it does. You look at it, you think it does have some potential, but there's certainly not been anything done for yeah. for quite a while. Yeah, the again on this one, the structure is good. The yard and the neglect and the yeah, and it's hard to really it's hard to really tell what it's like inside. Yeah, but you know what, we've got like the ones we're going to look at the garages that are in really bad shape. That you know it's. We've got structures like that that need to be torn down. We need to, you know, I think we need to put our money first in getting the ones really bad out of the, out of uh, the neighborhoods where the structures like this, there's no cracks of any major uh, sort in the masonry on this one, and the roof's still weather tight. It appeared to be, uh, you know, maybe some of these. Others could could wait if we could set a priority to getting the severely deteriorated ones down. The there, neighbors. There are a lot of structures. <clears throat> well, know. the neighbors. I mean, there's neighbors <clears throat> fairly close to this, obviously, yeah. from no, some of these yeah. pictures. It's pretty. And these do come from complaints. Yeah, these come. I mean, from we don't yeah, go out and try to find them. Generally, yeah. they're just usually people complain. So. Yeah. Yeah, I understand, but you know, still with limited funds, it's better to take the ones like the garage up the street from this down first. You know, if if we're going to have to weigh our dollars on where to go, the one that's a risk to the public would take. Priority. Of course, you're a long ways from demolishing it. You're just yeah. setting mm -hmm. a hearing for condemnation, right. and hopefully that will. Spur we're hoping some that interest. that will. Yeah, we're hoping that it will trigger. Some response, some response and, some, and, some and something to move forward to to get it rehabilitated. Okay. Further discussion? I'd make a motion we consider setting the date of December 8th for a public <clears throat> hearing uh, to declare 832 South 18th as dangerous and unsafe. I'll second. Uh, been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Ready for item N, M, consider authorizing the removal of unsafe structures at 1028 East Edison. And this structure in the picture has been removed. It, it fell gone? down uh, before this meeting and was removed by the owner. So, so no actions required. Not on the According outbuilding. to this picture, it looked like it was... <laughs> I think the wind was finally strong enough that it blew it over. Okay. So the owner has the owner has removed the debris that's been confirmed. Uh, now the owner has to come in and talk to me from the uh, in my office lives in Bartlesville. I don't think that they're here tonight. Uh, he would like, and I told him I would discuss with you. He would like to consider taking the garage down himself or getting a bid to see what it would cost to fix the garage. I told him I would present that to you I, in trying to save some money if he's willing to take that down himself, which he expressed that he is. I told him I would present to you to give him some time to, do, to put that together. What was your recommendation on that, Don? I told him that I have some serious concerns about repairing the garage. I certainly felt that I think that it needs to come down. He wants to do that, but said he would like to see if, if he could afford to repair it. And I told him 
I would present that to you. I think you should have the opportunity yeah, to. Yeah, I, I, I don't look have at any problems. It. If he wants to do it, mm -hmm. then he can make a final decision. I'm all. I'm. I'm very happy to have him do that if that's what he'd like to do. Yeah. But I told him the time frame would be, uh, would be before the next commission meeting. Okay, I was going to say another thirty days. Possibly. Yes, another thirty days. I told him that would probably be the maximum amount of time that yeah. that we should allow him on that. Okay, I'm okay with that, Leonard. So am I. Okay. So that's. Uh, does that take a motion? No. Get with him and see what he wants to do, Don. Okay. Okay, 404 South 11th. Yes, and I was contacted by the owner of this structure. He wants to look at taking that down himself as well. I told him I would present to you and see if we could give him 30 days to put that together. I'd be good with that. Leonard? Fine. I'm satisfied with that. Gary? Yes. Okay. 1108 West Cedar? Yeah, this is one I would like to proceed to have it taken down as soon as possible. There has been no contact from, from anybody on this for, with repeated attempts to try to contact an owner. There has been no contact. I do feel it's starting to get in the condition where portions of it are falling falling starting to fall down we looked at this recently didn't we? yes we looked at the last time so i would like to proceed to take this down just as soon as we can do we have some properties going out to bid now we do yes okay, that would be it's a concrete block or it's a masonry structure so if we could get it into a bid situation we might get better prices than mm -hmm. issuing an emergency day. removal by itself but we'll still need time to serve notice to the owner, won't we, Jeff? If you're under the, you're under the uh, emergency removal statute, you're not. You're, I, I, you I think we're getting to, to the notice. point where it's, uh, it's a serious safety threat. I know that it's probably been this way for a while, but if you look at it, as I drive by and look at it occasionally, it, it, it gets worse every time that I'm there. And I get concerned that if a child or somebody decides they want to go and explore, that it's going to present a real danger now, there are some block on the top near the door that are are loose yes that could yeah, come looks, in but, looks like uh, on that one end it's already leaning some well, yeah. that's, if, if you if and the roofs come in but not all of the roof has come in yeah. but eventually all of the roof will come in and I'm it's it's my opinion that it will come in come down sooner rather than later well I'm good with removing it I think this is a classic case of a dangerous and unsafe structure that we should expedite the process to combine it with other. Uh, we, we do uh, have one bid to to take this structure out. Do you? But we can try to get another. We can try to get other bids to take it out as well. Okay. See if we can combine it with. Did, did you I mean, if we put it in the bid package, it then won't come to you until another commission meeting where we award it. So it's okay. not an emergency removal. We're slowing the process down. So, I mean, I think it's it's if we, if we have you truly we, want this to be an emergency removal, we need to get a bid and take it out, not wait and have to bring the bids back to you. Well, I think That's totally whatever we your need, choice. we need more than one bid. Okay, we can we can ask for another bid. We do have one bid, but we can try to get another bid for that. Yeah, okay, we've got two companies, and then there. Uh, yeah, I know Ryan York does dem demolition, also. So if I can get some of that, if I can get that information from you after the meeting, too. you would have it by the next meeting. meeting. Yeah, bid, yeah, definitely. But not for this one. Um, it's no more but Leonard, if you can get me that yeah. information for him, we that'd be great. We have it. Ryan York's contact information. Okay, good. Okay. What was that? He's already on the bid list. On was bid list He's on the bid list, but this didn't go out to the big bid list. It went out for. Don made a quick call. We can totally get more bids, but yeah. if we stick it in the bid package, then it goes through a longer process. Yeah, I got you. Well, I wasn't for sure how quick your bid package was going, too. So, but just multiple bids is the best. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you bring that to us. Our first meeting. Want to be the tenth? Yes. November tenth. Mm 
questions. Okay. So we'll need to have a motion to, have we had a motion yet? Do we need a motion on that motion? Authorize um, staff to remove the property. To receive the property. bids to take. But, well, quotes, basically, because you're not bringing them back. Well, they, you just said bring the quotes back on the 10th, correct? Because the bid package is due on November 3rd. So if you don't, if you want to see the quotes, if it's not an emergency removal and you're letting Don make the decision to take it down, if you want to bring the quotes back and you decide who does it, we might as well stick it on that bid package because that should be coming before you on the 10th as well. It's just whether this is truly an emergency or do we have the time to wait? And that's not my call. I don't know. If, I'd like if to see it take down, coming, taken down tomorrow if we could do it tomorrow. If the bids are coming in the 10th, it's said like that for years. And, you know, it's, it's, the wind's not going to blow it over. You know, we're talking the 10th, two weeks, okay. either get three bids. So, you know, it, it doesn't matter as long as we get multiple bids to get the best price we can. That's all. You know, we got we can't just single bid everything. Well, let me. The criteria for taking it down without going through the formal condemnation process is that it's an imminent risk. It's not an imminent risk if you're going to wait two months. You know, mm -hmm. and talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, and take bids. So, if you're not going to do it immediately, then I think you need to start the formal process and do it. Uh, the state statute is actually worded that and we've talked about this, they don't even have to come to the commission for permission to do it, they can just do it. But, and it's been a long time since we've had a property like that. We had one that was leaning, about ready to fall. And yeah. I think fortunately there was like a commission meeting then that within two days, yeah. and they brought it to the commission. But this one, like you said, is, you know, I haven't seen it, but I mean, there, I think Jen's point's valid. If you're wanting to get competitive bids, that's inconsistent with it being an imminent risk to the public if it's an imminent risk to the public you take it down if it doesn't it's not, take if you notch it goes through the formal process yeah it doesn't yeah it doesn't okay doesn't take any longer to call three people maybe two or three minutes as opposed to just just one you know you don't have to give them two weeks to look at it just the, the information you've got with the photographs and the aerial is enough to get a lot going. I just think we, we've got to have, uh, when you're looking at, at $5,000, it, it adds up when you keep tearing down over a process of a year. So just get more than one bid. Yep. Well, we can, we can certainly bring back, <laughs> we can bring back all the bids that we can get before the next or, commission meeting. You know, if, if, if you get the cheapest bid, you can go ahead and take yeah. it down. Yep. Okay. All right. Did you hear that, Gary? You go with that. Yes, I am. Okay. All right. So you're not to proceed. Yes. Well, we need a motion. So I need, need a motion to authorize staff to have the house removed. Okay. Or to accept bids to have the house removed. Well, quote. Mm -hmm. Three not quotes. Bids. I'll Three quotes. make a motion that we remove 1108 West Cedar. Uh, we receive three bid. bids Close. and award the contract for removal to the lowest bidder. I'd second. Okay. You ha do you have that, Jim? Um, yes, I have a motion and a second to remove 1108 West Cedar after receiving three quotes and awarding to the lowest quote. Okay. Did you hear that, Gary? Yeah, we, do we need to declare it as um, dangerous, dangerous and unsafe inside. to take such immediate action, though? Does that need to be part of the motion? Yeah. It, Jeff, the statute actually requires <coughs> that. But, okay. I mean, okay. you've had your inspector tell you that, so. What was my motion? <laughs> yeah. Your motion is to remove 1108 West Cedar after receiving three quotes and awarding to the lowest quote. Add to the first. My motion is to declare this an immediate hazard, hazard to public safety, and that we proceed with the three with immediate yeah. action. So that's an amendment, amendment motion. 
technically. Would you like I'm the amended second, motion? Just, if you'd like to read the amended motion, yes. Um, I have a motion to declare 1108 West Cedar an immediate hazard to pay public safety and authorize staff to remove after receiving three quotes and awarding to the lowest quote. And I'd second that one, the amended motion. Okay, further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, consider reviewing the following previously condemned properties. 316 East Cedar and 729 South 4th. Yes, so these were on the agenda because we set uh, appointments for inspection and the homeowner did not make the inspection. So these were put on the agenda. I have been contacted subsequent by the owner. Uh, he has received funds to do the roof to 316 East Cedar from his insurance company. And so he will be moving forward with that and and is working towards getting financing for interior repairs. And he has also received a verbal quote from uh, uh, a demolition company to remove 729 South Forth and is getting the financing to uh, have that removed. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't have been on the agenda if he had made his appointment, but he didn't. And so that was put on the agenda. Okay. So you're satisfied with? I'm satisfied with the way that we're moving forward. If we don't meet those expectations within the next 60 days, I, I would bring that before you again. Okay, good. Okay. 712, any questions on that one? No. Gary? 712. 712 East Maple? Yeah, I, I would like to make a recommendation. There's been activity at this home. There has been power uh, that has been taken illegally from West Star. There have been people living in there in violation of what we have told them as the conditions. There have been arrests made there by the police department. I would like to move forward with removing that property. It has become, it has become uh, not only is the property dangerous, but it's creating a danger in the neighborhood because of the activity that is going on at that property. So this could be an imminent danger, Jeff? It's yeah. already condemned. It's already condemned. Yeah. yeah. This one's already condemned. Now we can add this one to the bid package. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that, Gary? We could add this to the bid package. I can hear everybody but Jen. She talks too fast for me to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> Even though this one's already condemned, you still can go under that imminent danger statute and, and expedite it. You can go either way on this one. So. There has been a marked increase of just illegal activity at this. I was very concerned to show up and find out that not only was power taken from illegally from West Star, but if you see the meter, it had arced across the meter. So whoever took the power, I didn't, if they didn't go to the hospital, they were very, very fortunate that they didn't. Well, this one concerns me as much as the other one, that, especially since um, there was people living in there illegally. Yes. And, and we had made it a point, and one of, an officer and I, to go there to meet with the owner who lived next door and, and to be very, very clear that that property had been condemned and had received assurances that people wouldn't live, be in that property and shortly after that. Okay. Well, we could be, I mean, our options on, one of the options on this could be to be consistent with what we did on the previous property about receiving de declaring an imminent danger and receiving three bids and have it removed thoughts or comments on that idea leonard oh i thought gary um i'll have to rely upon advice i think Building the, inspector. As much of a concern attorney. to me as the activity around there. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, it's not honorable, I'm sure. So uh, the house isn't being rented in that condition, is it? Or are they just it cannot squatters? be rented? It, it's been condemned, so it cannot be rented. It can't be. It, it can't be lived in. So the people are just squatting. I, I would say yes. I don't know the full circumstance of why they're there or the, their understanding of being there, but we did visit with the owner and explain uh, that the process had been condemned and that nobody can live in there uh, under any circumstances 
uh, and received assurances from her that she had understood that and subsequent police had been called to that property and reiterated that same point to her and had to go back at least one other time that I know of. <clears throat> Matter of fact, the day that I went there to look at it and called West Door about the power, there had been an air conditioner put in one of the windows. Yeah. I think we should serve the owner notice and go ahead and bid to remove it. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd make a motion we declare this an imminent danger and that we take three bids and award the lowest bidder to remove the property. The structure is uh, as soon as possible. Would there be a second to that motion? I'll second. Okay, been moved and seconded that we consider this structure at 712 East Maple an imminent danger. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, ready to move forward <laughs> then with uh, O. Okay. Letter O is to consider, thank you, Don. Consider authorizing closing the alley west of the First Presbyterian Church from November 1st through December 15th for a roof project. Uh, it's just a request they're going to be working on their roof and uh, talk to staff and we can work around it as far as with the, the sanitation and everything. Are they going to need to maintain a, a fire lane through the alley? Uh, there hasn't been any discussion about that. So all I know is that uh, that we can have access to it uh, and we can manage the residential areas for mm -hmm. um, for the trash uh, and we didn't really talk about the yeah. fire line. Well we discussed it with the public safety people and, they, and we asked if it was going to be an issue if that was closed and, and they didn't have any issues with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah the only thing you know I would, would wonder about uh, some way to get fire access uh, either to the back of the houses mm -hmm. or particularly the church either from uh, the north or the south they wouldn't need full access maybe mm -hmm. but you know looking if something did occur some way that uh, you know I w would think we'd want to watch that the the contractor just doesn't utilize the whole alley or some way we could bring some we can, we can visit with them. equipment in we can work that out yeah because it is a big project that's going to have logistic some problems reason. if the alleys have some big equipment in there too yeah. I think. but that roof is slate and they're large tiles and they weigh about like 40 to 50 pounds a piece and they're i think there were about 500 broken in that hailstorm a year ago so they're very concerned about those tiles sliding off and dropping to the ground so they're, they're very concerned about the safety of the people around the building as they're doing the project. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't have a, a problem have with problems, blocking the alley for them just other than we provide fire access to some way look ahead of time that if there is an issue, okay. firefighters can get in. Okay, would there be a motion, would that be a motion? I make a motion that we authorize the closing of the alley west of the Presbyterian Church from November 1 to December 15. And I'll, I'll second. Okay, been moved and seconded that we approve <clears throat> First Presbyterian Church's request. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, consider Item P is consider the treasurer's report ending September 30th. Yeah. Yep, you have the treasurer's report in front of you. I do have the pleasure of reporting that we do have the loan funds. However, they arrived October 4th, so you'll see them on the October statement, not on this one. <laughs> Those loan funds would be for for the, um, for the KDHE um, loan that we needed to apply for those funds. Right, okay. 
You will start seeing expenses for Basin 5 hit, which I've already talked with Sean Turner. We're getting the paperwork to apply for the reimbursement for those payments as well. On which ones? Basin 5, which is also on that loan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I did, one thing I did want to point out to you, um, when, when we were talking about the street projects, um, the West Main um, fund appeared to be um, short by about $350,000, and I was thinking that that was the utilities, that those hadn't been funded. I went back and looked at it. The bond proceeds for um, the 2015 um, street projects as well as West Main went into two different funds. So there was 333000 sitting in fund. Um, sitting in fund 92. Those two, um, I'm sorry, not 92, that's the current clink that we had the extra money on. It is fund 71. That 333000 was the majority of that piece that was missing from the West Main. So I've netted those two back together and moved that 300000 300 plus thousand dollars back to the special use sales tax, which we had moved over to close out the West Main fund. So um, we were not missing that 300000 like I thought we initially were. We do have $300,000 more available for street projects or sidewalk. It's street and sidewalks in the special use sales tax. It's just in the wrong bucket, so yes. to speak. Nice. Gary, any questions about the treasurer's report? No, thank you, Fred. So the the lift station basin five. Fund eighty nine. That's uh, eighty nine. Which number do you look at? The eighty nine. I look at the fund number, the which is in column B. But you can right. yeah, two twelve. You're right. Okay, so that's uh, listed there, and also then recapped on line fund two forty eight. And 248. That's uh, the KDHE loan. Right next month, you'll see that balance increase because we've received the funds. So okay. the balance of the loan will go up. And then that uh, number in 212 will balance out. Yes, except yeah. you'll start seeing Basin 5 payout, payout, which it's a reimbursement basis. So it'll go negative and then we'll receive the I funds. I noticed that in appropriations, we had right. some for TriStar. Okay. Okay. Then uh, 171, the airport terminal, have we applied to get our money from KDHE? Is that project closed out or? Airport terminal? Yeah. No, no. Okay. We're, we're working on the, the plans for the bathroom. Okay. The architect should have it uh, to us in the next few weeks. Because the, the design they did for the terminal was beautiful design. It just went way over their contract budget and the bathroom was a big portion of that. Um, that's all the questions I had. Okay. Okay. Any further questions then? Need to make a motion to approve. Mm -hmm. Treasurer's report, I'd make a motion then that we approve the September 30th, 2016 uh, treasurer's report as presented. I'll second the motion. All those in favor, sig uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Okay. Item Q. And there's an attachment in there. It includes an email that I sent Kelly Sunday. I was looking through my schedule. On the November 10th meeting, I have a recertification class that I have every year, and it happens to fall on the same date as a commission meeting on November 10th. Um, that meeting's generally that I have to take a test. That test, I'm not normally done with that test till around five. So that's an hour and a half back. Last year, I heard through the test and still passed it. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think I got I think I was here right around six. I'm not sure. So. So how fast did you drive? <laughs> we were within the limits. Um, I mean, we could move that. We can move it back to six o'clock if you want. I mean, I'll try to be here at six, but I'm no guarantee. Whatever. You, if we move it, does that make a 
issue for staff? No, especially if we do it on the same day, it won't matter. Should well, be. I mean, if it's, if just pull it back later. Yeah, yeah. move it to six or six thirty. Yeah, I don't. To be honest, yeah. I don't want to do it at six thirty. I'd rather hurry here. Shh. <laughs> Jerry's not here. Um, That's no issue. You for pick the time. Staff. Well, the first part of the meeting is basically pretty routine. So even if I was 10 or 15 minutes late, we'd still be fine if we did it at 6. No, we can. Or yeah. 6.15. When? 6.15. Okay. Same so, day, just 6.15? Yeah. Is it, Gary, is that all right with you? Yeah, that's fine. I don't care. Okay. And then uh, I will be out of the state on the 22nd so if the commission would like to move that meeting <clears throat> I, I will not be here the 21st either so you mean the 22nd of December yes okay. either the 17th through the 30th but the 20th Sunday December 20th is Tuesday. Oh, I'm right? on the wrong calendar. Well. You'll be here the 20th, Fred? Yes. Mm. <laughs> I don't think I'll be here the 20th. <laughs> <laughs> if we move that meeting up, is that a possibility to move it up? In the evening till say four four thirty. I know that on the twentieth. Twenty uh, yeah twentieth. That would give us time to get to where we need to be that night. Or do you want to just do the nineteenth so you're not? It's rushed? Monday night. I'd rather move it up to the nineteenth. The then we got to look at the packet on the weekend. Even though I won't be you working, want me to work this, that week, yes, well, you're saying. <laughs> even just though I be won't be working <laughs> that month. But the 19th is fine. No, I, it's Monday. That's fine. <laughs> that we'll, yeah, the 19th. We will work it out. Yeah. We, we can try to keep that. We can try to arrange things to keep that agenda light too, so it will be. A, That'd be sweet. A huge. That would be sweet. If that's okay. okay. December 19th at 5:30. December 19th. At what time? Or is it December 19th? Uh, we could do. Um, 5.30 on December 19th. Let me put that in here so I don't schedule over. There we go. Okay. Okay, so Gary, did you get that? Are you good on those dates, hopefully? Yes, that's fine. Thanks. Okay. Then any other questions about? No problem with the January meetings? No. You don't have any troubles with January 12th to 26th, do you, Gary? Um, give me a second. Nope. Okay. So we're good. So to recap quickly, the 10th meeting will start at 6.15, November 10th, and then the Regularly scheduled December 22nd meeting will now be December 19th at 530. All right. Okay. Um, Is that a motion? Do I have to make a motion? Yeah, I make yeah, a motion that we... I'll make that motion. Yeah. <laughs> that we move the starting time for the November 10th meeting to 615. And then the December 22nd meeting to December 19th at 530. Would there be a second? I'll second the motion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. <clears throat> aye. Okay. Item R. Report on the Montgomery County zoning <laughs> application for the airport property. Yeah, this week that in uh, looking at uh, the zoning, uh, the county zoning at the airport, we discovered that all of the city-owned property uh, is uh, designated as a P1. 
which uh, prohibits all the uses that we have currently going on. And uh, we are working uh, with uh, their staff and attorney to get those changed to I-2 so that we can make all the activities in compliance with the zoning. Okay. Any questions or comments on that? So you're going to change the M2 to? No, that's no, the city. Um, the part you... that's green and hashed is, is been annexed into the city and it's zoned M2. The parts that are that are empty, like where Cessna is, Kansas Aviation and um, Aviation Controls, is in the county, and for some reason the county designated that as p1 probably because the city owned it um but it we would like it to be in zoned uh to county i2 heavy industry to match the m2 city heavy industry zone we they just use a different um code for their zones than we do but it basically means the same thing this is they're in the county and all that other that you see in green is in the oh, city okay. oh really There's Yes. It's already in. But two different annexations brought all that in. Right. Well, Jeff? It's all, it's all city owned. When she says in the city, she means annexed, <coughs> annexed. into the city. Annexed right. into oh, okay. the city limits. <laughs> okay, yeah, city zoning. Yeah, it is kind of confusing. Yeah. The city owns it all. And we're not talking about us changing any zoning, it's the counties. Okay. Right. Those three parcels. Yes. Okay. Because this goes all the way back to 95. So. <coughs> Um, well, it goes back to whenever probably the county probably instituted back. their three mile zoning around independence and designated it and just, it was just nobody mm -hmm. ever caught it till we actually called them and asked them some questions. They're like, oh, this is P1. We found out what, actually, Jeff researched it and found out what you could do in a P1 and we determined that it probably needs to be corrected. <coughs> okay. That's a report item, so we can, any other comments from staff on that? No, we've submitted the, the application and we're just waiting for Scott to let us know when the hearing is. Okay. All right, so update on city projects, Mickey? Uh, Basin 5 project, uh, it's, uh, has, we've got substantial completion on that. They're doing a punch list. 8th Street water line, we also, it's substantially complete. The Penn and Laurel, uh, we are planning on getting quotes, uh, and we'll do it various ways. Um, quotes, do, they, do the contractor do it before the end of the year or in the spring, and either asphalt or concrete, so we can evaluate what is the cheapest uh, way to proceed. Um, also, uh, we uh, this week have had uh, representatives uh, doing an ISO evaluation, a mid-time evaluation, <clears throat> and uh, we are uh, hopeful that we may get even some good news in that re regard. <coughs> what's, what's an ISO? Making? That's the insurance rating. Oh, okay. The insurance rating. We went recently, when we can merge the fire department with EMS, we went, uh, we went down, and uh, they have changed the way they compute the different categories and it there's hope for that we might get some further relief in that in that area uh, there we're providing information to them uh, we were all this week do they test the fire plugs for pressure in yes. their ISO they ask for certain ones to be tested and uh, fl fire flows given mm -hmm. and uh, that's another benefit of that 8th Street water line that we've finally got completed it'll help our flows on on that in that area of the city but the big the big uh, thing that uh, has helped us not only the recategorization but also the fact that uh, we have just uh, implemented the N ng 911 uh, I think that helps us considerably even though it's not uh, active some of the stuff's not active till next spring I think we get a lot of credit on that Okay. And that's that's all I have at this time. <clears throat> Questions, Gary? No, thank you. 
when we did the or had uh, trans systems work on the the study the sewer the water lines did they come up with flow tests on some of the fire hydrants for us to to help plan no, line replacement or anything well we do the our staff does yeah. the flow testing but actually right pressure ratings and and get that information do we do pressure it annually in addition to flow ratings uh, so pressure ratings in addition to the, the flow memory. yeah i know they flush the fire hydrants but do they test the pressure um i will find that out yeah so just you know looking at that we've been talking about master plans if you the flow rating of the fire plug could show maybe some potential problems in our sewer mains or not sewer main, water mains i hope they're separated hope they're not sewer mains. <laughs> yeah that would be bad yeah yeah but that uh, might help give some points of where we need to mm -hmm. address uh, look at line replacement or any type of problem okay. in that is i know uh, they they haven't done an official k-pop study on pressures <clears throat> but they have done some uh, testing and have some regional information about mm -hmm. uh, pressures we'll check on that okay okay all right any other comments okay item t is a report on the 10 2016 montgomery county chronicle letter to the editor as requested by commissioner flesh uh, that with the audit it identified with the water sewer fund i think we talked about it during the presentation the six hundred fifty thousand dollars we overspent the budget and uh just wondered if we were because at the meeting it was pointed out it was a possibly a, I think you said a employee the salary transfer or the software um, have you had a chance because I look back at the audit and identified it as capital improvements line item that was overspent well I must not have explained it very well <clears throat> when I went through the budget with Tony, with with um, Terry at the end of the year we looked at all the line items that he had control over those expenses and I looked at the total at the bottom I did not notice that the salaries to be reimbursed that I had not booked those entries that was completely my fault the big thing that caused the issue last year is that when the budget was done for last year the bond issue that was issued to pay off one of the water loans was not budgeted at all so me not booking those entries those expenses for the bond issue coming out kind of netted each other if i had budgeted for the bond issue as i should have we would have come in under budget by hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. of dollars at the end of the year so it's about line items and i was looking at the total number at the bottom mm -hmm. i think we've even said in our response to the auditors that it's a, it's a staff training issue it was mm -hmm. my issue and i've learned a lot from that first budget process um mm -hmm. i did find it when i started doing the next year's budget because i'm like wow that number's really low for last year um and i had mentioned it to the auditors and they're like well we'll find it in the audit and see what it means at that time they hadn't looked at all the numbers so i didn't know it was a big red flag that i needed to bring up at the time now as far as the software i was actually um, talking with ENCODE this afternoon, and it looks like there's some things that we can fix in our payables. Some of it's working right, some of it I need to look and make sure we're processing it correctly as it goes through. And Brenda's been on vacation this week, so it was kind of half a conversation. She does the payables most of the time, so I need her to sit down with me and go through it and make sure we've got them booking correctly. Okay. Well, that's what, uh, looking back through it too, and then uh, comparing where we were mm -hmm. uh, to identify so you know this year we're kind of on top we're so far late in the year by the time we got the audit right. sometimes it's a major issue to go back right. and update and then uh, you know the the thing we've had so much happen this year with uh, the move and everything i was also concerned with how this is going to impact we didn't have the uh, the operating expense came up when you look at the mm -hmm. the budget for the electric and the utilities on building d and you know even uh some of our, our on call contract for this year had zero amount but we've had a lot of general 
engineering and a lot of expenses there that all these unbudgeted items, how's that gonna impact our, our budget as we finish out, out the year? You know, financially, where are we if, right. if we had this 650,000, but if it's a bond payment that, that triggered it, I'm just wondering where are we gonna finish the year with all the extra expenses? Have we got kind of a, a good grasp on our, our operating cost yet to know? For building D? Yeah. I know that we had um, somebody come in last week from Mercy to talk about the differences of running a hospital versus running City Hall. Um, BCS is supposed to be coming in making some changes that will help bring down the operating costs. Um, we've, I've been speaking with our boiler guy this week about talking about what we can do within the boiler system. It's one of those things that it's a huge complicated system because it is a hospital. You know that all too well. You've asked questions all along about how we're going to fix it. And just the caution of when you change one thing, making sure you understand what it affects downstream. So. Mm -hmm. I know that we're working on it where we've got um, a request out for a quote on natural gas um, for the heating at a bulk rate instead of just buying it straight from Atmos which we were supposed to be getting back by the end of this week I believe and then I know that Mickey's working with West Star some of our charges are demand charges which have been extremely high and so we need to get that worked out as well yeah when you go the the demand and then I think with the electric there's another factor that if you don't use a certain amount you you pay because they have to to uh, guarantee you that power so they're because we don't use it we still have to pay a certain portion of it and uh, you know in talking to Mercy's uh, uh, representative that was there at that meeting we're paying about as much now as they paid uh, with all the buildings there and I've uh, we've been in conversation with West Star, but I've uh, asked for another meeting because they need we need to pin down what our package is and what we can get mm -hmm. so you're, and uh, concentrate on whatever that determination time is to focus on keeping the expenses as low as possible. Yeah. The electricity electricity use at, at that time. Are we are we sure we're getting the right tariff rate? That's what we like, need to find out. I don't that demand charge is it exorbitant. It's different. There's different classifications, there's different tariffs for, like I know there's a different rate for schools than there is for heavy industrial. So somewhere in there I would think that there would be a municipality rate um, without looking at it. It's that thick. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have to find somebody to look at it. And then controlling those demand charges like you're talking about, Mickey, would be um, big. Well, that's those demand charges are almost as much as the cost of yeah. electricity. So being able to identify where those potential savings are at would be a tremendous benefit yeah. and could potentially bring them down to even a real reasonable benefit. Well, the demand, when you, you initialize a piece of equipment, and I think it runs for 15 minutes, that sets your your demand There's for the whole month 15 minute interval. and it's sequencing of too many large motors engaged at the same time kicks up your demand that you can set your demand one day a month by running one piece of equipment and then you have to pay that rate all month but uh, that's you know I guess not that I'm worried but was kind of concerned with where we we had uh, the uh, overspending on the budget item and then looking with all the, the, the changes that we've had that haven't been budgeted this year, where we're gonna come up. Uh, I think initially we had authorized, what, 166, 188,000 shortfall on building D to come to, uh, was it, the sales, no, the historic memorial hall tax memorial credit. tax, yeah, the memorial hall tax credit, and then you know in July saying we were a hundred thousand mm -hmm. off on electric, you know, and now we're we're coming down to the end. Where are we going to finish the year out? 
I mean, I think the, the last budget that was presented, that that's still being covered by the Memorial Hall tax credits, and I'll be updating the budget throughout the month of November so that we'll be visiting about that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'll, I'm hoping to have it to at the end of November um, so that we can consider the revised budget as we go into December. Okay. So we're working on the software. You found that it was the, the bond payment. Was that our, our refinancing? On the bond payment or just another bond? No, that was the 2015 bonds, which included the money that came in that we used to pay off one of the KDAG loans. Okay. It was a little over a million dollars. Okay. We refinanced one bond. Was that in 2016? Though? That was this year that we refinanced the educational sales tax <clears throat> bond money. Okay. Or the money that's funded by the, the bond that's funded by the educational sales tax. Okay. Well, that's a question I have. Okay. Carrie, you have any questions? No, thank you. Okay. All right. Report on uh, <coughs> city board minutes. Any reports on that from staff? Okay. No comment. All right. Commission comments. Gary, have you got any comments this evening? Uh, I'm just wondering if we're moving forward with our trainer agreement. Yes. Uh, We've been in conversation with him, and he's working on a proposal and be meeting with the commission as soon as he gets that in order to uh, proceed on the process. Okay. Did you hear that, Gary? I did. Might that happen pretty quickly in the next meeting or so? I hope so. Okay. He's, he's right. asked me for some information, and, and staff has sent him what he has asked for, and he's uh, developing the scope. And that was this week that he asked me for some additional information. So I know he's working on it. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. Yes, sir. Senator, do you have any? No, I don't have any more. The one, I would have one question. We're uh, still waiting on the water rate study. Thank you. Where, we, where are we at? With we the water received rate? a water draft water rate study, what, last week? Thursday, last Friday. Thursday yeah. evening. And uh, we have some issues with it, and Jen's been in conversation with them about uh, where they got the rates, the, the current rates. I think it, uh, it, they must have looked online or something to get those rates. But they are, I mean, they have presented a draft, but there's some issues with it that we're working through so we can expect to see something possibly next month i hope yes okay because that's in a spreadsheet if they change the rates it ought to spit out new numbers yeah fairly quickly yes it should okay public concerns this next i have debbie miller oh. sir was there something else no. yes we have the issue on the uh Hang on, the drive. Oh. on the drive. <clears throat> on the drive from the new, uh, uh, the metal building, the fire building. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some quotes on what different things, ways we can handle it, whether it be asphalt, concrete. Uh, but our recommendation is that we have our uh, employees do a gravel drive for now. Uh, we're looking at 7,000 instead of uh, the various costs, 56,000 for concrete, 33,400 for asphalt, and uh, uh, half asphalt, half concrete, 43,700. Uh, I would recommend that we had our employees do gravel for now uh, and get a waiver on that since it's a temporary building. Well, what we're suggesting, and I visited with the uh, city attorney, is, is to request a variance since it's temporary until a, a determination's been made of, of what's going to happen at that location because we just would hate to spend that kind of money without not, you know, and then have it ripped up. So um, Jeff and I visited about it, and we recommend requesting a variance to be able to do it just gravel just to get by at the minimal cost at this time through PNC the variance through yeah the board of zoning appeals yeah that's what the other one okay anything else okay. now we're ready for citizens comment 
Yeah. Ms. Miller. Three minutes. It's not on the screen so go. she can see it. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry. It'd be nice to see it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I can see it. So I talk faster <laughs> than <laughs> I get an extra over. minute on that one. I'm Whoa, very no, sorry. Oh, now. look at that. <laughs> Here, add some more time. I'll reset you got to reset. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know it wasn't showing up. There you go. Okay. Ready? During the last few months, a group of concerned citizens exercised their First Amendment rights to petition the government and to, to peaceful assembly. In return, they faced swift attacks, some of which were ripe with absolute lies. First, the day after the petition was presented to the commission, Mickey Webb, in an interview with the reporter, stated, quote, the way it had gotten, he didn't see how his re resignation would actually help anything. He fears those who have been making personal attacks would simply increase their ire towards the department heads, end quote. He concluded by saying he hoped, quote, folks can come together and put their energy towards positive solutions for the city, end quote. Over the years, I have worked with and spoken to many of Mickey Webb's critics, and I have never, ever heard one, even one person say he or she would focus his or her ire on department heads should Mickey Webb be relieved of his duties. I have to wonder why Mickey Webb, at a time our community is so divided, would make such divisive, hypocritical, and in some respects, retaliatory comments. This is yet another example of his lack of self-control, sound judgment, and professionalism. <clears throat> Then we have the dramatic performance of Hoyt Caston at the last commission meeting. Virtually every statement he made was inaccurate and defamatory. Among his fact challenge claims was his long running, unsubstantiated Looney Tunes lie that my beef with Mickey Webb was a result of the city's refusal to close the alley for my mother's estate sale. However, de divisive comments and inaccurate statements do not change the fact that we have an ineffective city manager whose poor judgment has often resulted in financial losses for taxpayers. Some supporters of our city leaders seem to be so financially secure that they can afford to contribute $100 to $300 to even $500 to the election campaigns of city commissioner candidates. Should their property taxes go up as a result of mismanagement of city affairs, they most likely could easily absorb the increase. But not all independence residents are as fortunate. These include single people trying to support themselves on one income, single parents working two jobs to support themselves and their children, working families trying to make ends meet on low paying jobs, and retired people barely getting by on fixed incomes. I have been attending commission meetings since 2011. The thing that has consistently galled me has been that our city government has taken money from people that are struggling financially and has completely wasted it because Mickey Webb has, provided, has failed to provide sound and consistent leadership in our city government. Therefore, I would request that he be fired. Thank you. Okay. We have no other forms filled out. So with that then, that concludes our meeting for this evening. Do so we have an executive session? Do we have an executive session? Do we have an yes. executive session? Okay. Jeff, do we need a motion for, to do that variance, to apply for the variance? Wouldn't it be better to have a motion? I don't think it's necessary. I can do that, can I? I think staff can do it, but the motion can do it. Yeah. Is that on the gravel? Probably be better. Variance. Whatever your comfort level is either way. It's a temporary building. Yeah, I don't it's, mm -hmm. think it matters to me. I mean, it, I don't know, you and Gary. If staff, Gary, can you hear? Yes. I mean, if staff can do it legally, I think we let them. I, personally, just take I would feel more the, comfortable if the commission directed us to do that. Well, the, 
board of appeal uh, that board's going to yeah but to submit the application on behalf of the city i mean i i would feel more comfortable if the, if the commission authorized okay. us to do that right. with that then i'd make a motion that we um well what would the motion be Is authorized it? staff to submit an application to the board of zoning appeals for a variance to allow gravel for the temporary building that's it did you get it jen yep for okay. an indefinite period of time well, i hope it's not indefinite but Tim, i don't you want to define you, you temporary can. that's up to you um oh. we just hated to, yeah, to some spend projects. some money on something that might get ripped up right now um, on other projects i've had mm -hmm. we've gone with the gravel that it was for a certain Okay. period of time so you know if it's temporary indefinite just I don't it doesn't matter what what time would you suggest indefinite. Well, that okay that would be up to the board well, it, well he asked so I just yeah. didn't know if he wanted to clarify it it would be until we make a decision on yeah so be. you want to put it like a, a not to exceed a certain amount of time no no it just if they don't I didn't know if the zoning Board of Appeals then would want to know how long that we want it, and I don't think we want to will. set a date. If yeah. it's temporary, it could be temporary two years, three years. Mm -hmm. It's up to okay. them if they want to come back and ask how long we want it for. But if they do, okay. do you want to go back through the process because it'll delay it another no, month, or do I you don't. want to set like a... Gravel's fine indefinite for me okay okay so the motion is jen can you read back the motion authorize staff to submit an app to the board of zoning appeals for a variance to allow gravel at the temporary fire ems building that would be my motion i'll second your motion so second all those in favor then signify by saying aye aye, aye. okay now we're ready for executive session will be for yeah, 20 Two different 20 property owners. Twenty minutes. <coughs> Business owners. Yeah. So the first one would be for non, for Turner Prime. One executive session. Okay. For meeting with uh, one of the business and trade secrets. Okay. Business and trade secrets. And there'll be two separate ones of those. Yeah, for the same thing. It's so one executive session, but we'll have. One okay. Come in for the first part, and a different the second part. Who okay. else is going to be in the executive session? Yeah. Who will be in? It'll there? be uh, the commission and Kelly and myself. And then we'll be. What would be? And the attorney. Well, the business owners. The business owners are coming in. The yes. business owners. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yes. Uh, Mike Conway will be on the first and one. Bernie, Benny Burskins. Benny Burskins on the second one. Okay. Then. Uh, Did I have a motion? I'd make a motion that we. Go into executive session for 20 minutes, you said? We think we can do 20 minutes. Are we going to have two executive sessions then? No, we can do one. Okay, then we. There's staff for Mr. Conway, second F for Mr. Burgess. Okay. One okay. takes too long. Or Who's the second one? Any Burgess. Okay. Then. Uh, so that would be a motion that we go into executive session for 20 minutes for trade secrets. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor? Is Gary going to be able to participate by phone? You're going to call yes, him? Yes, I'll call him. Call him. Okay. All right. Um, all those in favor then signify by saying aye. 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 Take a couple minute break to I'll use the little boys' room. So to reconvene at 742? Yeah. Seven. Yeah, 742. Okay. How's Gary, that? we'll call you back on your seven. Yeah. All right. It's about okay. three minutes, Gary. Yeah. We are back in open session. Yeah, there will be no further action. Therefore, I would entertain a motion then to adjourn. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And, and stand up and leave. <laughs> All right. Thank you for your time.
You safe, Gary? 